Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This fall is my era of editing. I have never made it past the first draft stage of anything that I have written other than like school assignments that had to be edited but anything that I've written for fun starting from when I was a child. I have gotten multiple first drafts down but I've never made it past the editing phase. So I am changing that and this fall I am spending a lot of time editing my manuscript from last NaNoWriMo. If you are a writer, particularly if you have participated with NaNoWriMo or you're aware of NaNoWriMo, you probably have heard of the controversies going on right now, actually for the last little while. There was the grooming scandal from last year or two years ago and now the AI stuff going on. There's a lot going on. There are a lot of people who are choosing to distance themselves from NaNoWriMo and I totally get that. I personally also feel the need to distance myself from NaNoWriMo, which makes me very sad to say because I love the concept of National Novel Writing Month and that challenge of writing a full manuscript in one month. And it has a very special place in my heart because for years I'd said someday I'm going to do NaNoWriMo, someday I'm going to do it. And let's see, maybe it's it four years ago now. I finally was like, I'm never going to have time, so I'm just going to do it. <laughs> I can't keep waiting for forever. And NaNoWriMo is what got me back into writing, and I am very appreciative of that. Because of their challenges, I actually completed some first drafts, which is amazing. However, multiple things have happened that I just, I no longer feel comfortable aligning myself with them at this point. So there is that formal statement. <laughs> so in light of that fact, and also in light of the fact that Having a month of a very specific goal and challenge has been super helpful to me. I've been trying to figure out what I want to do instead. I know a lot of people have been asking that same question and hopefully there will be something else that will kind of take its place or be another concerted effort because I love the community and the camaraderie in November for all the different writers coming together and the writing sprints and all of these things. I love that and hopefully there will be something else coming along those lines. That being said, I had already started thinking that maybe I am not going to be writing a new first draft this fall, but I am really feeling like this fall, instead of starting another first draft, which I do still have, I have the sequel percolating in my head for the book that I wrote last year. However, this fall, instead, I'm going to spend my time editing. My Main goal is to be done with my first round of editing by the end of the year, so until the end of December. But if my main goal is to finish a one complete round of edits by the end of the year, I have been trying to think of some SMART goals for figuring out what that will look like. So SMART goals, if you're not familiar, SMART stands for specific, measurable, attainable, or achievable. I guess relatively same thing, relevant and time bound. So I spent some time thinking about like my big goals and breaking them down into much smaller steps and mini goals and milestones along the way. This is my writing notebook. I have so many secrets to my books in here. <laughs> okay, so specific things that I want to do this fall. And I'm, again, it's breaking it down. Some things are like, very basic, but I try to put like everything because I find if I have a lot of smaller goals, it doesn't feel as overwhelming to get to the bigger goal. So the first thing I need to do is print out my manuscript. Then I need to decide on my color coding. I know I want to go through my manuscript and have a color coding system with different colored notes, meaning different things, different things I'm looking for when I go back to edit. So I want to decide what my categories will be and what colors to assign to them. I need to read through the manuscript with my color coding. I want to do a round of edits focusing on just one or two of the colors. I want to send to beta readers, which is freaking me out, but I will deal with that stuff later. <laughs> I'm gonna break down my manuscript into chapters because I don't tend to do that during first drafts. And then I have storyboard question mark on my list. I have always been intrigued by the concept of having some form of visual storyboarding. I need to decide if I want to do that at this point in the process or save that for when I'm starting a first draft. So that's why it's on there with a question mark. I need to figure that out. Um, I need to do some copy editing, which is just the grammar, point of view, word consistency, word repetition, things like that. I want to design a cover. 
and I want to spend some time mind mapping my characters. So these are not in chronological order yet. I probably should have done that before the video because the mind mapping, like I need to work on that before I start the editing so that I can keep track of the picture of the character that I want when I'm going through with my colored pens. But those are my goals thus far. As I said, this is the first time I've edited. This is the first time I have done this process. So this is very much me trying to figure out what is my process? What do I, what works for me? And what do I want this to look like? So that being said, today I'm going to go ahead and order the copy of my manuscript. I was toying with different options for what I want it to be, but I did decide to go with just a basic spiral bound. I want to be able to move it and maneuver it. And I think spiral bound would be easier at this juncture. So this is not an official copy. Um, it's not, you know, going to look like a book, but it's going to be so cool and exciting and it's going to be mine. So I'm going to go ahead and order it. I had a brief moment of panic because I thought the majority of my manuscript had been deleted. Panicked. Found it. We're all good. Okay. Second hold up. I went to put it in my cart and it's remarkably expensive, which I knew that it was... I was expecting it to be a certain amount that I was prepared to pay. I knew it would not be cheap, but this is more um, than I have right now. So I'm very sad and I just need to recalibrate. I am going to, I know that there have to be other options. This was just the first thing I had in mind when I thought about printing it. So I'm going to spend some time finding other options and figuring out how to make this work. So stay tuned. I will yet keep you updated. Um, okay, so... I realized that I had inadvertently clicked the wrong button when I was trying to print my manuscript. I thought I had unclicked the color option, but apparently I clicked the color option. So when I realized that and I went back and I unclicked the color option, it was much more affordable. So oh, I ordered my manuscript and it arrived today. Um, I don't have anywhere to set this up. This is not the greatest angle, but this is what I have right now. So I'm going to open it up. I'm so excited. I'm a little bit nervous, but I'm excited. I didn't also did not expect it to come in a box. I expected it to come not in a box. Okay, come on. Oh my goodness. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Whoa, I didn't think it would be this thick. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Like, obviously, this is not here. You can see my wonderful title of NaNoWriMo 2023. Um, Wow. Obviously this is not like, you know, there's no title, there's no cover. It's not the size of an actual book, but, um, wow, I wrote this. <laughs> I am so excited. Even this in a plastic cover spiral bound that I printed, um, this represents uh, a dream I've had for a very long time. And this is so cool. Okay, on to my next phases of the editing process. Okay, I have my manuscript, which is still wild to me. Um, and the next thing I need to do is decide how I want to color coordinate, not color coordinate, how do I want to basically, okay, here's what I need to do. <laughs> I need to decide how my method for going through and editing. So I have a whole bunch of super fun, bright colored gel pens. I have these really cute um, tabby things and then just generic. Oh, sorry, the ring light, the ring light. <laughs> generic colored tabs. I'm going to go through today and decide what things I'm going to look for as I go through my first 
read of my draft and like what types of things I want to mark so that when I go and start actually doing the rewrites and stuff, I have it, I like color coded or somehow marked that, I, I mean, I'm making this up right now, that red means character growth or whatever. So I'm going to go through, decide my categories, first of all, and then decide how I want to delineate them in my manuscript. If I want to use the pens or post-its or what color post-its I want to use for which part. Clearly, I'm still trying to figure out for sure what I want to do. I'm a little nervous that because I've never done this. So I'm a little nervous that whatever I decide, like once I start actually going through my manuscript and once I start editing, that I'll be like, oh, everything that I decided, it's not actually working for me, but that I would have already marked it up. And then I'll be like, oh, that didn't help me at all. And now I have to go through again, or now it's cluttered in my manuscript and it's not meaning what I intended it to mean. So, but I'm just taking it one step at a time. I'm not starting to mark up yet. I am just going to go through and decide what I'm going to look for and how I would like to mark it in my manuscript. That's what I'm going to try to do today. In my notebook of secrets for all of my writing, I um, made a list of ideas of like specific things that I think that I'm going to want to look through. And so I guess I need to prioritize in my first read through, what do I want to look for? Because I'm anticipating what I'm going to try first for my first time going through and doing this much editing for a manuscript. I think what I want to do is go through it once and have one to two big things like character growth or um, backstory, things like that in one read through and then probably some smaller things like wittier dialogue or less dialogue, mark things like that to note to notate um, for the first read through. And then the second read through have two other bigger things like, like world building notes or things like that, so that I'm not overwhelmed with all the big things. And like, as I go through how like making sure so that so that as I go through my first time, I'm not trying to think about all the things I'm like, I'm only thinking about these two big things and these two small things or whatnot. So yeah, we'll see how that goes. Okay, my list is subject to change. Um, what I have so far, and this is just a list of everything. I haven't broken it down into like first edit and second edit. Well, I think I'm gonna get the vibe as I start to see what is too much for me to take on in one read through and what is not enough. We'll see. But I think what I want to do is I'm going to have a certain color of tabs for my female main character to represent. And so anytime when I mark a page with um, the pink tab, I'm I was trying to look at this and decide which color felt like my main character. I couldn't decide. I couldn't decide. But for now, I'm going with the pink tab. So for things that I'm calling personality building, if I need to put in more things. Oh, that's something I need to add to my list. Okay, what I just added to my list was is backstory. So I need to decide if I want to keep the same polka dot tabs for backstory, if that will count if that in my brain makes sense to keep that in the same category as personality building, probably, but I need to think about that more. So like, per, yeah, personality building if um, like, mannerisms, making sure the dialogue is consistent as far as her personality and tone of voice, if I need to add in more personality, um, things like that. I feel like the backstory is goes with that, but I feel like it's also different. So we'll see. And then I think I'm going to use the purple dots for the personality building for my male main character. And then because this book is a romance, I'm going to use the blue polka dots, I think, for specifically marking things um, for their romance and their chemistry. So if, if I need to add in scenes, if it's if I need to develop a scene more, if something isn't working for the romance, if I need to add in some chemistry, um, all things related to their romance and chemistry that I would like to add. I also want to mark if I'm going through and realizing that I could really describe something better or do a better job at showing not telling. I want that to be something specific to look for as I go through. I don't want too many tabs. So maybe maybe that's what I'll maybe 
that's what I'll do. Maybe in one read through, just that I don't have 50,000 million tabs. Maybe in my first read through, I'll just focus on character and romance. And that way I'll only have the three color tabs. And then maybe on another read through, I'll use these tabs for marking places where I want to describe things better, show, not tell. And then another color tab for setting and world setting and world building type things. Now, this idea I actually saw from Andy E. Sears. She has also been editing her manuscript. I have just adored her videos. They've been so encouraging, so helpful. She's doing kind of a walkthrough of her process. And yeah, I've really enjoyed her videos. So if you are a writer or if you're in the editing process or if you're just curious, I would check out her channel. She has so many fun tips and ideas and it's just really helpful and nice to see someone else going through the process but something she did as she has recently been going through her manuscript is she noted with um post-it notes in the top of the manuscript i think she i think she notated four different places that she as she was reading through it that she felt like really captured the feel of her book so that when she got to the end of it, if all of her editing, everything that she had, she said, if the whole book feels like those four key scenes, then she'll know that she has accomplished what she set out to do. So I think I'm going to take that idea too. And I left my post-its downstairs, but use the post-it notes to mark key, key scenes or key feelings of what I want the, the takeaway of my book to be so that that way I can kind of make sure that I'm staying on track for the overall themes and feel of the book. And then this I'm not going to do post-its but I think with I couldn't decide if I wanted it to be pink or green and maybe I will change my mind at the time but to notate places that I want to change or edit dialogue if the dialogue isn't flowing well if I need to add in if I need to cut dialogue if I need to add dialogue if the dialogue's too choppy if you know whatever if I need the tone to be more serious or more clever whatever it is, I'm going to note, make dialogue notes on this. And if I need to add a scene, I am pretty sure that I'm not going to be adding scenes as I go. I just want to do a read through and markup and then go through and do the writing for whatever I'm changing. So if I need to add scenes um, or delete scenes, I'm going to use a blue pen to mark those. And then, oh, the last thing on my list was the backstory. So I guess I need to think if I want to include backstory as I go with the polka dot post it. I think I will decide that closer to when I'm actually sitting down to start. So that's what I did today. And I'm super excited to jump into my manuscript. I'm still trying to knock out more of my first draft of the middle grade book, but I am mentally planning November to, to be for sure when I am doing a lot of the editing. It's going to kind of be my NaNoWriMo replacement. So if I start... I'm really going to try to finish my first draft of the middle grade book before then so that I'm not, I want to have, I don't want my brain to be too confused and trying to do two projects simultaneously. So hopefully in October, I can finish my first draft of the middle grade book and knock out all of these steps that I need to do before sitting down with my manuscript. And then in November, I will begin aggressively editing. I'm so excited for the next steps. Oh, I forgot. I can't put my feet up because my chair automatically turns. Oh, it's still so hot. Okay, um, final update before I start my month of aggressive edits. Okay, I did not finish my middle grade first draft. And I was like, am I even going to say it on my channel? And it's embarrassing and I'm like I'm letting myself down I'm letting people down and then I'm like nope 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 get those thoughts out of there it is what it is at this point I know I don't like have to share but also I am appreciative of the accountability that it takes from sharing this and there's also no reason not to this is part of my writing story at this point I have not finished my rough draft for my middle grade novel yes things have been very busy but at the end of the day I ooh. Okay, so I'm a verbal processor and I often will just be like talking and then like realize things or unlock things. So um, yes, as I was talking, I realized I'm scared. I'm, I'm scared. Oh, interesting. Okay, now I'm gonna have to unpack that. <laughs> it's just overwhelming and the imposter syndrome of why do I think I can write middle grade? Why am I jumping all around? Because last year I wrote a romance and now I'm doing a middle grade and 
what does that say about me as a writer? And why can't I just sit down and do it? And how come the ideas aren't flowing? And how come my first chapter is still the best out of the whole manuscript? And does that mean I can't do it? You know, all the things. So I'm glad that I'm talking about it because again, as I'm talking, having this time to like self reflect a little bit, and I will do more self reflection off camera. <laughs> so yes, I originally set a challenge this last week and a half of October that I was going to write 20 minutes a day. And the first day I sat down and I wrote one sentence. That's what I got. And so that was a bummer. But then I was like, actually, no, it's not. Because if I hadn't made myself sit down, I wouldn't have even gotten the one sentence. Next admission, I haven't sat down to write for my 20 minutes since that day because I'm scared. <laughs> and I know, I think it brings me back to something that I've talked about a couple of times now on this channel, waiting for that magical first draft. I think there's still a part of me that's like, well, if, if I could write this, it would be flowing more easily at this point. And I know that that's not true, but so that's the fear side. But then there's also the practical side and logical side of, just figuring out, okay, how do I move past that? Does that mean I need to sit on it and come back to it? Does it mean like, will it be better for my manuscript to just sit down for the 20 minutes and write it and knock it out, even if it's complete crap? Or do I need to sit on it and wait a little bit and then return to it? And I'm really torn because I thought for sure I was going to be just knock it out. And if it's crap, I can edit it. But that's not feeling right. And so I don't know if that's just the fear talking or not. But that's where I am. So back to my plans for November. I was hoping, well, originally I was hoping for my rough draft, for my first draft for the middle grade novel to be done in the summer. That didn't happen. Then I was going to finish in October. It doesn't look like that's going to happen. Um... So I think at this point, I am going to push pause on it because I really wanted to do my NaNoWriMo replacement and start editing in November. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And instead of internalizing thoughts of failure or whatnot, I am going to recognize that that's the decision I'm making and it's okay. And if I want to pivot mid-month in November, I can. Nothing's tying me down to this. I can do what I want. It's my book. <laughs> so that is the very real and honest update of where my writing has been. Part of the problem was with this season of life, my writing time was going to be in the evening. And at that point, I'm usually tired. So that's the thing. It's also just figuring out when my writing time will be and what that will look like. And I guess the same practical question, if I'm exhausted at night and I know that my writing, my creativity and my writing will not be the best, do I still push through and write when I'm tired or not? Because I kind of feel like that will hurt my process, but also when else am I going to do it? So I need to figure out that part too. Anyways, November. November is almost here. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I originally at the beginning of the month I was like how is this possible how are we already in October how is the year already almost over but I'm ready for it I'm so just the energy that comes from November for me first from NaNoWriMo and now with this editing project I'm so excited I'm ready to bring all the creative energy into this month and and have fun and work on this project so I am calling it I still don't have like it's not an official NaNoWriMo replacement it's not even a thing I've been calling it my well I keep getting mixed up in the, what I'm calling it something to do with aggressive editing my aggressive editing fall aggressively editing November I don't even know it's gonna be something I'm aggressively editing my, <laughs> my manuscript so there's my update on my rough draft for the middle grade novel and my update on November and my aggressive editing plans <laughs> So stay tuned. I I know I'll have one update video for sure in November as this process goes. I don't know if I'll break it down into two, two smaller vlogs or just one at the end of the month. We'll just see how things go and how life goes. But anyways, those are my plans. Thank you for coming along. And until next time, happy writing.